the Papa Roger account uh, went live on Facebook again yesterday. Well, actually late last night. It was very interesting how I found out. Tanya and I were actually backstage after our live and we were just kind of chatting about everything. And usually at that point when I'm doing that, I will check out my social media accounts and just kind of see what's going on. You know, I'll pull up Twitter and see what goes on in my feed. Well, in mid sentence, I pull up my Twitter feed and I say, oh my God. And this was from the nerdy addict. And I said, oh my God. And Tanya's like, are you all right? And I'm like, check this out. I'm like, nerdy act is reporting that the Papa Roger uh, Facebook account has been reactivated. And I was like, wow. So all the old posts, if you look here, started to appear again in the Idaho case discussion group. And I was like, wow, what is going on? Like, this is crazy. So I said, um, I'm going to look into this. I'm going to do a little bit of research and, you know, come to find out through my research, it's now gone. So it popped up for a little bit and then went silent again, which is really interesting. So, you know, a couple things to this. And I, I dropped, like I said, I dropped a video today. Um, can speculate a little bit here, can maybe solidify something here. I'm just going to throw it out there for basic conversation in the chat. Could be a couple things. Let's say that I definitely don't think it's, I definitely don't think it's Koberger. I don't think he's like, you know, activating accounts from prison. Now we know that he has an tablet, but he's not going to have access to like Facebook and stuff like that. So let's just squash that because if Papa Raja is, Brian Koberger, which a lot of people think it was. And there's been some controversy about it, of course. Uh, he's definitely not reactive in an account. There's no way that you could do that. Or this just was a tremendous troll back in the day that maybe some of their speculation or their inquiries that they were saying just happened to be true or I don't know. Maybe it was a, a law enforcement agent. Maybe it was Brian Koberger. Could it be a possibility that law enforcement activated that account or Ann Taylor activated that account or the state activated that account to look into maybe some private messages that were going on or maybe some of the activity on that profile? Now, I know once this activated, it popped down. There was a lot of fake accounts that were popping up. I mean, the internet was going crazy. Absolutely crazy. But what I want to do is you all know what I like to do first is I like to go back. So we're going to go back and look at how this all started. And then I have some, I'll pull up some of the discussion groups that this was popping up in and people will go on berserk and we can read through some of the funny posts that were going on. I thought that would be great. But let's go back into some history because I always love to go back and look at things and kind of explain it and go up to current day. You guys know I love to do that. So uh, this article was back from February 23rd, 2023. And I'll read through this a little bit. So in plain sight, inside wild Papa Rogers theory as sleuths claim Idaho suspect Brian Koberger was posting about murders before the arrest. So internet sleuths have posted a wild theory that the Idaho murder suspect may have been posting about his alleged crimes online before his arrest. 28-year-old PhD student was charged with the murders of Madison Mogan, uh, Kayla Gonzalez, Xana Canodal, and Ethan Chapin. Now a unverified theory has spread that Koberger may have been posting about the murders under a pseudonym. I think that's what it is. However, there is no evidence confirmed by police to provide this. A Facebook user known as Papa Rogers and a Reddit poster inside looking raised concerns when they started creating posts that seem to have detailed knowledge of the case. Claims from the po posters were also revealed to be true, leading to rumors that one or both of the accounts were used by the alleged killer. Papa Rogers was part of the University of Idaho case discussion group on Facebook. However, the account was removed after 
posting some really creepy stuff, said the group administrator, Kristen Cameron. Papa Rogers shared an eerie post on November 30th that read, of the evidence released, the murder weapon has been consistent as a large fixed blade knife. This leads me to believe they found the sheath. This evidence was released prior to the autopsies. At some point, Papa Roger got into an argument about the murders with other user who asked, why do you communicate like a serial killer? Soon, Papa Rogers was removed from the page with Cameron explaining, Papa Rogers was never a mod or an admin in this group. He was on here and arguably insistently with people and <clears throat> said some really creepy stuff. We removed Papa Rogers at 7.10 the evening before Brian's arrest. He created a group page and had six people in it. No one has heard from Papa Rogers since his arrest, she added. Another strange internet user was inside looking from Reddit who posted on the Moscow murder subreddit, which I think has been closed down since now. The user was able to clarify, clearly, correctly identify the importance of the white Honda Elantra near the crime scene and shoe prints that likely belonged to the suspect before the inf information was confirmed by authorities. Speculation, killer parked behind the house, approached property through the tree line, entered sliding glass door, left it open, inside looking, inside looking posted. Committed murders and exited sliding door. One knife, according to the coroner's statement. Time of the murder, approximately 3.20 a.m. to 3.40 a.m., according to a car fleeing the scene on camera at uh, on Highway 8, approximately 3.45 a.m., vehicle left skid marks upon exit. In response, another Reddit uh, user posted, dude is solving his own crime, psycho. Inside Looking's Reddit profile had a picture that initially showed a masked man dressed in black and holding a flashlight. However, police haven't been able to con connect the Papa Roger and Inside Looking accounts to Koberger. So that's what we have. That's a little bit of the background here. And you guys always know I like to go back and look at history before we you know, move forward in presentations. Let's look at some other accounts that we're posting about the Brian Koberger or Brian Koberger, the Papa Roger video that uh, Papa Roger account that was popping up. So menace to, uh, to sobriety, uh, Papa Roger's account has been reactivated on Facebook and his posts are showing up again. And here were some of the posts from 2022, as we see here in the University of Idaho murder case discussion group, Papa Roger on December 22nd, 2022 posted Day 39, the killer is not in the victim's immediate circle. Okay, that's kind of creepy and eerie now that we found out all that detail. Uh, and then on November 30th, 2022, which I believe was the last post that they allowed, of the evidence released, the murder weapon has been consistent with a large fixed blade knife. This leads me to believe they found the sheath. This evidence was released prior to autopsies. So really crazy 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 stuff okay and then i checked in with carrie rawson because she's usually pretty good on this stuff right away carrie said regarding papa roger the original is back up as of 7 30 23 and then she put the account number there if you click on that account number that link is now dead it doesn't work anymore the hoax account that came shortly after Papa Roger was booted and then uh, gives the account number there. So, you know, um, I think the count was reactivated in whatever that purpose was. And here's the account. If you go to that link now, it's dead. It's a dead link. You can't get in there. You can't look.